Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm so excited to bring you a recommendation video of Japanese horror. This is probably one of the most requested subgenres that people ask me to recommend and I've been putting it off because while I definitely enjoy Japanese horror, I'll be honest, they don't always get five stars from me, but there definitely is a distinctive flavor to books that are translated from Japanese authors. They tend to be really dark, really intense, and they are definitely worth trying out if you are new to the genre or are a seasoned horror reader you definitely should try some Japanese horror and I think I have a good variety here some good recommendations so let's get into the books first I want to recommend the graveyard apartment and this follows a family that move into an apartment building and it seems just too good to be true the rent is the right price it has new appliances and it just seems like the perfect place to raise a family however you find out that the apartment building has been built upon the land of a graveyard and this is especially problematic because in Japanese culture there is a huge respect for the dead and a good portion of the population really do believe in spirits at least in a different way than a lot of people do in North America and so you have a good blend of traditions that come into this story and of course the setup for a haunted house narrative and if you know me if you follow my channel you'll know that haunted house stories aren't my personal favorite but I really like to recommend this one because of the fact that it really does incorporate those Japanese traditions if you're not as familiar with Japanese culture I think this is a really good introduction to it and I also like to recommend it, especially for those of you that are newer to horror or perhaps don't really want those really intense stories. Compared to a lot of other horror books I'm going to be mentioning on this list, this one isn't overly intense. There's nothing particularly gratuitous about it. And so it's a pretty safe one to check out and just a really good introduction to Japanese horror to begin with. Next, I want to recommend a novel called Ring, and this follows a man who receives a mysterious VHS tape. He goes on to watch it, and afterwards finds out that whoever watches this videotape is possibly or potentially going to die in a short period of time. And so you get to watch the man in the time leading afterwards, the dread, as he tries to scramble and find a way to avoid his upcoming doom. You probably recognize that synopsis because you Yes, this is a novel that the movie is based off of. So whether or not you've seen the Japanese version or the American adaptation, those were both based off of this original novel. This one, I'll admit, was not a personal favorite of mine. I found the characters to be very stilted, but if you're a big fan of the movies and want to see where they all came from, I definitely recommend checking this out for yourself. Again, I think it's a really familiar narrative, and for a lot of people, this book is a favorite, so while it wasn't a personal favorite of mine, it might be a new one for you. So if it sounds good, definitely go check it out. Next, I wanna recommend Confessions, and and this is a horror thriller that follows a teacher whose young daughter has died. She believes that her students are responsible for that death and she decides to take the ultimate revenge. This is a really unique story that is told over multiple perspectives and basically you hear the story of what happened to the daughter from different people's points of view and each time it switches to a different character you find out more and more about what actually happened and this is a book that has incredible twists. Most people would classify it as more of a thriller, but it is incredibly dark and twisted and messed up with obvious harm to children. And I'll say that it definitely goes to some very disturbing places. And it's a book that you just keep finding out more and more of this story. And the story just gets more and more over the top and intense. And if I piqued your interest, that's a good thing because I definitely think it's one you gotta try it for yourself. I think it's very representative of Japanese horror and thrillers where you have these really dark characters that just do terrible, terrible things. You'll see a lot of that in these books I'm recommending here. And this is definitely one that is recommended a lot, but for a good reason. It's very memorable and yeah, very intense, very dark, and I hope you check it out. Next, I wanna recommend In the Miso Soup. This one follows a man who works as a sex tourist guide 
guide and he basically takes around North American tourists that want to discover the seedy underbelly of Japan and go to different nightclubs and get to experience prostitution and all of that in Japan. And he takes on a new client called Frank and agrees to spend three nights with him, taking him around to these various places. And when he meets Frank, he realizes that something is just not quite right about this guy. He tells him a story of why he's in Japan and his answers just don't really make sense. And as he begins to spend more and more time with this man, things just get stranger and more disturbing. He's just very inappropriate and they start to get this sinking feeling that something is very, very wrong. This story is told over three parts with each part representing a day and the story basically gets worse and worse. I need to put some warnings in for this book that of the ones I'm mentioning here, this is easily the darkest and most disturbing. There are some very graphic scenes that were definitely turning my stomach when I was reading them. I would not blindly recommend this book to everyone. So if you have a strong stomach, if you're looking for some very, very disturbing subject matter and are looking for a book that will really push the limits. This might be one to check out, but again, please go into this book knowing what you're getting yourself into. This book is often described again as more of a thriller, but when you get a book that is this dark and this disturbing, I think it's fair to put the horror label on it as well. And it was a good narrative. I thought it was very suspenseful in the first two sections. There was a lot of buildup. The ending didn't totally land for me, but still worth reading if you're again intrigued by how dark and disturbing it is. So I'll be curious to know if anyone's planning on checking this one out. Finally, I can't make a video about Japanese horror books without talking about one of my favorite horror authors, and that of course is Junji Ito. He is actually a horror manga artist, and so he writes and illustrates his own manga, which are Japanese comics, and these are so dark and disturbing. He does a lot of short story collections, and I basically have read them all, absolutely love them. The one I specifically want to recommend for this video is Fragments of Horror, and the reason I want to mention this short story collection is that quite a few of the stories in here focus a lot around Japanese traditions and specifically around Japanese spirits. So I think it really has more of those cultural elements that you don't always see in his stories. He doesn't necessarily write around a certain theme, but there were several stories in this collection, like I mentioned, that really do capture Japanese life. And so I think this is a very good place to start. And if you're not familiar with his work, he typically does them mostly in black and white and he has a really gruesome and graphic style. He does really weird things. A lot of times he will take bodies and twist them around and do very strange things. So lots of body horror and like I said, goes to some very weird places. He's not for everyone, but I personally connect very well with the psychological aspects of his horror and I really do encourage you to check him out. And again, if you want something that has a lot of Japanese influence, this one is a really great place to start. Now, if you want to try some Genji Ito, but you don't necessarily want to start with an unrelated short story collection, I'm gonna give you a second recommendation, and that is for Uzumaki. And this is set in a town where people start to see spirals everywhere, and it causes them to go insane. This is an incredibly unique story, and I've recommended it a few times on my channel. I find this book to be absolutely terrifying. It really plays into the psychological aspect of horror that I love so much. And when I first heard the premise for this collection, I really did think that it sounded really dumb, and I'll admit that this book very much surprised me. It's amazing how terrifying an author can make spirals out to be. And once I read this book, I started to see spirals everywhere. So if you want to try a book that has more of a cohesive narrative because it really does follow this town and a group of people that are all seeing spirals and what that leads them to do and how things pun intended, spiral into some incredible moments of horror. I definitely recommend checking out Uzumaki. It is a wonderful read and absolutely terrifying in the best possible way. Finally, I wanna end this video by recommending another horror manga, but this one by a different author, and that is the story of Aibitsu. 
This is an urban legend about a girl that is living out on the streets and she comes up to people and asks if she can be their little sister. If they respond to her, she decides to follow them home and basically take up residence in their house as their little sister. However, she is a very creepy version of a little sister and I will say that creepy things ensue. In fact, this book is actually very gruesome, very dark and does have content warnings for self-harm. This book is kind of exactly what you would expect it to be. The plot is a little bit simple. You take the idea of a little sister and just take it to some terrible places and she is just intense and dark and it's so messed up. Compared to Genji Ito, I don't think that this book is as strong, but if you're like me and have already read through everything that he has put out and are looking for more horror manga, this is a fun one to try. It's just enjoyable, dark, fun, all of those things, and definitely I would encourage you to try it for yourself if it sounds like something you'd enjoy. So that is it for this recommendation video. Please let me know down below which of the books I mentioned are you most interested in trying for yourself and also recommend me your favorite horror books by Japanese authors because I definitely have not read all of them and if I read enough I would definitely love to do a second part and come back with another recommendation video for the subgenre. I think that Japanese horror just has a really unique flavor. It doesn't always work for me but at the same time it's so unique and distinctive and very, very dark, which can be a lot of fun. So again, drop your recommendations down below. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of horror as well as science fiction, fantasy, and thrillers. If you like this video, please give it a like with a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and I will talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Okay,